Pullbacks versus breakouts. What is the better trading strategy? How do you combine the two and how do you make it work? Everything in today's video. So hello and welcome and I have been asked a lot and a lot about what is better pullbacks, breakouts and what do you have to know. So this is what I will go address in this video. But first really make sure to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. It really does make a big difference. Also turn on the notifications so that you get notified when my next video drops or when I go live on YouTube and answer trading questions. So let's get into breakouts and pullbacks and I trade both. I trade or well, I used to be mainly only a breakout trader but during our masterclass Moritz is doing the the pullback trading and I really got to know pullback trading on a very deep level and ever since then I started to incorporate pullback trading more and more so this is really really a an, an fascinating topic for me because um, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart and if you want to know more about the masterclass also check the link in the description below so let's talk about breakout trading in general I and mean, let's talk about the options that you have when you look at breakouts versus uh, versus pullbacks so the first one is that obviously um, when you are looking at such a such a market you have a very nice trend that is starting here then you have your exhaustion pattern the market is not able to push higher anymore as strongly so this is a, a sign that the market uh, the momentum is fading and then one option would be just to trade a simple breakout for that you you draw your support level here you make sure that you have a very strong support level which means that at least two to three touch points when you look for uh, trend line breakouts you need at least three touch points because you can always connect any two random points with a trend line so horizontal breakouts at least two to three touch points the more the better but another option would be also to wait for a pullback and this is generally how it looks like so the breakout would be just you wait for the market to close below um, the support level in this case and then you would initiate a, a potential short trade so option one breakouts what is very important is that you only trade when the candle is fully closing outside outside of the breakout level this is what many amateur traders do wrong they they jump on such trades mid candle as long or when the uh, candle is not fully formed or fully closed and then they run into fake outs and this is very very easy to to avoid just you have to stop making trading decisions mid candle only make trading decisions when the candle has fully formed fully closed and has uh, has given you a full breakout sometimes the, the breakout is not tradable. It could be because the initial breakout candle is maybe too large and very often you'll see a runaway uh, breakout where the candle might be very, very strong and maybe it's closing around here and then you would be forced to use a very wide stop loss and then your reward to risk ratio is thrown off. So those large breakout candles <clears throat> often make um, trading breakouts not really feasible. And then you could use a pullback option or a pullback strategy. Another option when you wouldn't trade breakouts is when the breakout happens during the middle of your night, for example, or when you are not in front of your computer, um, you just cannot trade the, the breakout. And then you could also wait for the pullback. And the pullback happens right here underneath this area. So what would happen is you have a fully closed candle outside of the breakout area. And then you wait for the market to get back here. And then there are a few options how you could get into pullbacks. Um, we use uh, different pullback methods, uh, a multi time frame approach with a moving average as well. You could also wait for a momentum signal here at the, at the previous breakout area. So when support becomes resistance, that's when it gets really interesting. You can look for small patterns on the lower time frames. Um, but generally, this is the difference between pullback and breakout. Breakout happens right at, well, as the name suggests, at the, at the breakout level. And the pullback happens a little bit later. And and there are a few very very important differences so in this case what happened afterwards is that the market did break out so here is the breakout candle this is where usually the breakout traders would get in and then you can see the market pulled back into the level how did it pull back with the engulfing candlestick so you can see strong bullish candle very strong bearish candle completely engulfs the previous bullish candle and then 
both the breakout and the pullback succeeded. However, obviously, there are a few differences in how this will play out. And the thing is that if you are a breakout trader here, you have to sit through one, two, three, four, five, six, more than 10 candles of where the market is just going sideways. It's going a little bit in your favor, then against you, a little bit in your favor and against you. So breakout trading sometimes can lead to you staying in the trade for, for a few candles and nothing is happening. And this can be challenging for a few traders. Also, there's a, there are a few things that we can cover later on when we talk about um, the pre-breakout move, which is uh, very important as well when we look at wave analysis, for example. But very important, uh, something that many traders overlook when they choose between pullbacks or breakouts or when they trade breakouts only or pullbacks only, is that there will, there will not always be a pullback. Sometimes you have a good breakout level, you have a very good um, resistance level, you have a nice um, qualifier here, uh, which is a lower bounce. I talked about this in previous videos. You can just search on my YouTube channel. And you have the breakout here. And then the market will just run away and pullback traders will not get into this trade because there's not a pullback, obviously. So if you decide to be a pullback trader, you have to understand that sometimes the market will run away without you. And this is something that I addressed in the masterclass when I, um, when I was able to pick Morat's brain and I asked him, so what do you do um, when the market is breaking out but nothing is happening? And he said, this is simply not my edge. You have to really understand what is your edge. If you're a pullback trader, you don't trade breakouts and you have to be okay with missing some of the trades. There's always a pro and a con and very important also to understand is that a trading system or the trading system that you that you choose and that you opt for is not able to catch 100% of all the moves. There will be opportunities that you miss. There will be other opportunities that don't work out that um, you miss as well. So there's a, it's not as black and white. Sometimes also this will happen, which can be frustrating for pullback traders. You have a confirmed breakout, a good breakout level, a head and shoulders breakout, and then the pullback doesn't reach the previous um, support area. So in this case, the pullback traders will most likely also miss it. So it's really important that you are aware of the pros and cons or not even pros and cons that you are aware of what is it that your trading strategy is capturing or trying to capture and what are the things that can happen and sometimes you will just miss trades and sometimes you will just not get a signal very very important so here a little bit of a <clears throat> of a not a pro and con but just a comparison when we look at breakouts and pullbacks breakout strategies will generate usually more trades because every pullback has to start with a breakout before so you necessarily or well naturally you have more trading opportunities as a breakout trader. However, a breakout approach will usually also generate more fake out signals. When the breakout is not working out, when you have a breakout and the market immediately pulls back against you, that is a fake out when the breakout is not working. So this is a, you have more trades, but you will most likely also have a lower win rate. However, it's a, it's a much simpler approach than um, trading a pullback strategy. Breakouts are very easy to spot. It's very straightforward how you, how you look for those. Um, whereas in pullbacks, you have, you have more options. You have generally less trades, obviously. Um, it can, if you combine breakouts and pullbacks, that's where I find really the power comes in um, because sometimes you will miss the breakout and then you can get into a pullback or sometimes the first breakout will not work out and you have a fake out then when the pullback comes around then you might have a, a second chance to get back into the trade another thing is that pullbacks help you get into into the price action into trends at a more mm, favorable let's say favorable price and at a more favorable situation when we look at wave theory sounds complicated what does it mean so when we look at when we look at this price um, action at this uh, breakout scenario so you can see we have trend wave one two and three so in this example you are entering as a breakout trader here which is right at the beginning of wave three which is um which is really important to understand that you need to understand 
your trading strategy at what point of wave and trend <clears throat> analysis or yeah is is are you getting the entry signal so you want to get in as early as possible in a new trend wave in a new impulse wave and the difference is that here for example in our first example the breakout trader gets in at the end of a trend wave this is usually what happens or what often happens here in this example the breakout trader would get into the beginning of a new trend wave but there are other examples where you get in very late into a trend wave and obviously you don't know if it's going to be the end or the middle of a trend wave when you get in because obviously we don't know what happens afterwards but when you see such a strong move and when you're a breakout trader you need to understand that you're not getting in at at a good at a at a new point or at a fresh trend wave you are getting in either very late or at least in the middle of a trend wave and the longer the trend has previously going on the higher the chance for a success or for a pullback um, exists because the market always moves in waves right so this is a really important actually to understand that at which point of the trend are you getting in or at which point of the trend wave so in this example <clears throat> the breakout trader would get in roughly around here probably so it's the in this case it's the end but let's say we don't know and it could also be the middle but the higher the probability for a pullback increases the later you get into a trend whereas the pullback trader would get in roughly around here which is obviously we don't know that this would have happened afterwards but you are getting in not at the end of a trend wave but now you know that you are trying to get in at the end or at least in the middle or somewhere where the pullback wave the correction wave is is trying to um, trying to turn around so knowing at which point of the of the trend um, wave and of the the wave pattern in general you're getting in is really really important so you can see the pullback trader in this example would have gotten in um, roughly at the end of the correction wave and very very early on here in trend wave number three one two three here in this example um, very good one as well and you can see that we have um, again this is what i call the lower bounce and this is i've made videos about this in the past just check the my youtube channel look for lower bounce or for breakout build up and again it helps you to get into trades at a more favorable uh, position in trend wave analysis so you can see we have we have a trend wave here then you have a correction wave and the breakout would have generated would have been generated here and whenever you see a, a smaller um, breakout buildup, that can really improve your chances because you're not as likely to run into a into a pullback immediately. You can see then the initial breakout succeeded and moved a little bit in your favor. You have your pullback, um, another correction wave against you. And in this example, maybe if you get in here with a breakout, maybe this would have kicked you out, which is totally fine. It won't work out 100% of the time. But if you trade a pullback approach, this may have helped you to get back into the trade because you can see a very strong engulfing candle and not only engulfing candle but where is this happening it's happening right at the previous breakout area and those areas will often get tested very very often it's it's common to see then you have your confirmed um, engulfing candle you are entering at the end or at the well at the beginning of a new trend wave when this pullback wave has been completed and then you can see there are multiple ways how to get into into a new trend when you use breakouts or pullbacks or you can combine the two and if you want to know more about how to combine the two also make sure to check the link for the masterclass in the description below we have a whole trading course and many many uh, webinars and live webinar recordings about how to dissect the live market to find the right uh, pullbacks and uh, breakouts and everything else that you need to know but the most important thing is that when the trade does not work out you have to cut the loss there's no other trading principle that is as important as as this one because many traders ask me hey i trade breakouts but sometimes the breakouts don't work out and what do you do the easy answer and the only right answer is that you need to cut your losses when you see that your trade isn't working out cut the loss you need to minimize the losses when the trade doesn't work out and at the same time you need to really learn how to let your winning trades run when the trade is working out don't interfere with it have your fixed target wherever it is based on what principle you use targets it doesn't really matter we have a few different ones that we use but 
don't interfere, don't cut your, your wins and don't let your losses run. It's usually this way how most amateurs approach it, but you need to cut losses and you need to let winners run. And then this is how you make any trading strategy a potentially profitable one. Cut the losses, get out when you see it isn't working out, don't hang in there. Breakouts will not work 100% of the time. In trading, nothing works 100% of the time. And that's really, really important to understand, internalize. And the implication of that is that you need to cut the losses. You really, really need to cut the losses when you see it doesn't work out. All right, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below, and I will be back shortly with a new video.